I'm David Rich, president of Mount Sinai Hospital. To my right, Dr. Dave, Dr. Davis, my left, Dr. Charney. I'm going to begin with about 10 minutes of comments about the Mount Sinai Hospital and the progress that we've made in 2013 and the beginning of 2014. Uh, there were many changes throughout the hospital that were made in the last 15 months in the interest of improving safety, quality, and efficiency. Uh, for example, we moved the pediatric cardiac operating rooms and intensive care units so they were adjacent to the other services of the Kravis Children's Hospital. And several additional product, uh, projects were undertaken to improve our patient flow and our throughput and to relieve overcrowding in our emergency department. For example, we added telemetry capability to all of the beds in Ten Center. Step-down units were created on GP7 Center and the Kravis Children's Hospital P4. PACU beds on Annenberg 7 were converted to an extended stay unit such that patients did not have to use inpatient beds overnight. KCC uh, 4 North was renovated quite nicely and, reno and uh, we created additional heart hospital beds with telemetry as well. And uh, I think most impressively, in February 18th, we opened a 20-bed observation unit. Its opening was linked to a dramatic decrease in the number of patients awaiting medical floor admission every morning and the amount of time that those patients awaited those beds in the hospital. In 2013, we had multiple surveys from external organizations with very successful results. Both CMS and New York State Department of Health seemed to have moved in with us at times. The Joint Commission recertified both our ventricular assist device and our advanced palliative care programs. We had a very successful CMS Title 18 survey. Additionally, Mount Sinai was recognized by the Joint Commission as the first comprehensive stroke center in the state of New York, and Mount Sinai Queens was recertified as a primary stroke center. Next, I'm going to cite some impressive quality data, some really important improvements. This season, for the first time, we vaccinated 82% of our faculty, staff, and students at the Icon School of Medicine and the Mount Sinai Hospital campuses in both Manhattan and Queens. That is a dramatic increase over previous years and a real statement about the dedication of our staff and our students and our faculty to public health. Mount Sinai also received a top Consumer Reports Surgical Safety Rating. HCAPS, which is the Patient Satisfaction Survey from the federal government, uh, showed that patient, uh, inpatient likelihood to recommend increased to the 81st percentile nationally. That puts us at the leading edge of New York State. Hospice bed utilization has grown, and as our palliative care services have expanded and moved upstream within the system, with consistently higher percentages of beds in, on KP6 occupied by those, by those hospice patients, uh, when I last looked at it, over the last six months, 89% of our designated hospice beds are now utilized uh, based upon the hours of utilization. That's a tremendous increase in hospice utilization. And our cath lab has one of the highest safety ratings in the nation now for 16 years in a row. A fantastic, wonderful uh, uh, series of quality improvements over the years have led to sustained excellence. A large number of infrastructure, information technology, and fire safety projects are underway or were completed this year at the Manhattan campus. The boiler on Madison Avenue is being dismantled even as we sit here today. I don't know about you, but I'm very happy about that one. <laughs> it's funny what gets applause, isn't it? And there was a major growth in our cancer programs and our non-cancer infusions in the Ruttenberg Treatment Center. Notable projects at Mount Sinai, Queens involved the launch of EPIC in mid-2013 and groundbreaking for a $150 million building that will uh, show tremendous advances for that campus. There will be seven new operating rooms, an expanded emergency department, and ambulatory care services to truly reflect what a 21st century community hospital should be. I'm extremely proud of the team at Mount Sinai Queens where the length of inpatient hospital stay decreased by 0.9 days, almost one full day decrease in inpatient length of stay in the first quarter of 2014. Well, full credit to the, to the new management team, uh, Brian Radbill and the older uh, management team that worked together to really create a uh, tremendous spirit at, at Mount Sinai Queens to uh, move forward and to do uh, wonderful things. Their patient satisfaction is at all time highs for a community hospital in that borough. The floor teams were very proud of their magnet survey preparations when I was out there last week and I could not, could not be more impressed by their, by their preparedness and their dedication to quality. 
There's some notable progress in other areas as well. We've entered into a new collaboration with National Jewish Hospital of Colorado, and we expect to see major growth in our care of patients with pulmonary diseases under the leadership of Cal Powell, our division leader of pulmonary critical care and uh, sleep medicine. And also, we launched a new Critical Care Medicine Institute this year in February with the arrival of Dr. Stefan Mayer, and we continue to see major recruitments in many specialties, too many to name, but I will note that uh, urology and cardiac surgery in particular have shown tremendous growth uh, related to those recruitments. Within the next few weeks, there will be consolidation of adult and pediatric neurointervention at Mount Sinai Hospital with the uh, tr uh, sort of transfer slash recruitment of Dr. Alex Berenstein, one of the pioneers in the field of neurointervention. And bringing that together with our own team, led by the departments of, of radiology, specifically the interventional radiology and neurosurgery, we will have one of the top programs in the world in neurointervention concentrated here at Mount Sinai. This goes along also with the transfer slash recruitment of Dr. Sadi Gatan, that will bring pediatric neurosurgery also to this campus, in preparation for which we're building five more step-down beds on the P floor pediatric floor. So you will see that we're making Mount Sinai Hospital the center for the most advanced pediatric care in New York City. And so how can we focus then as a team and focus internally? We should treat every patient and every visitor as if they're a member of our own family, to constantly ensure the highest levels of care, quality, and service. Every single one of you that work here at Mount Sinai and all of your roles are critical to our successes for the whole health system. We cannot succeed in the face of these obstacles that confront health care, both locally and nationally, without your personal dedication to our missions. We're committed to treating patients of all means, and especially those in our community. Not all hospitals share that social mission. I would like to end by personally thanking each and every one of you for your dedication to quality, your pride in your work, and frankly challenge you to do even better. As a team, will be even greater despite the challenges that face us. Uh, next month uh, will be the 30th anniversary of my arrival at Mount Sinai. Uh, and I'd like to uh, thank you all for your attention right now and to open this up for questions. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone who has a question to go to the microphones in the, uh, uh, in the corridors or in the aisles here, and if anyone uh, is, uh, can't make it across, we, we, I think we do have one or two microphones that can be uh, passed inside. Michael Marin, surgery. I don't have a question, but I want to echo a comment you made before about the importance of all of us participating in this growth. I want to relay a experience from this morning. We were interviewing a visiting professor for, a, for an important position in Mount Sinai, and he said in the course of his discussion that when he came to Mount Sinai this morning, he walked through the front door and it was immediately greeted by one of the security people with a good morning, how are you? How can I help you get to the place where you need to go at Mount Sinai? This is an individual who's been in multiple institutions around the city and around the country and he said he had never experienced a situation where someone reached out to him with such energy and enthusiasm to help him find his location. If we're doing that at each of our ports, our entrance sites, uh, at the doors, at the cafeteria, if we're all participating in this, it has an enormous impact on the people you wouldn't expect it would, and it also impacts on our ability to recruit great people, maintain our patients, and deliver the quality of care that uh, we just heard about is happening throughout the institution. Hi, my name is David Connor. I'm the nurse manager for the surgical ICU and the new observation unit. Um, one of the challenges that uh, Mount Sinai, we constantly face is um, throughput of patients. And I'm wondering how we will be utilizing or if we'll be utilizing the other campuses to relieve um, or increase our, our, the volume of the patients who come through our doors if that's a possibility. Well, we actually uh, have a, a policy which uh, enables us to move patients uh, between the Mount Sinai Manhattan and Mount Sinai Queens campuses uh, specifically related to uh, that, that issue. Uh, it is uh, uh, 
uh, an issue, though, because patients and their families and their providers are not always in favor of moving people. People will often come to a campus because they want care that's somewhat uh, local to their, uh, to their family or their community. And so uh, uh, St. Luke's and Roosevelt have had a successful uh, relationship for years in terms of being able to move patients around. Uh, and I think what you will see is that there'll be uh, more quaternary care moving into Mount Sinai and hopefully, especially uh, elsewhere in the health system, you'll see that uh, we'd like the community with, uh, for example, in Morningside Heights to see uh, their emergency department there at St. Luke's as a great resource. So by bringing Mount Sinai quality to the highest levels throughout the system, we would hope that those local communities would go there. But to help with flow and throughput, we, do, we are doing a lot of things at Mount Sinai. And, and as you're aware, David, some of that is related to moving patients out of the ED up to floors when uh, patient beds have been identified without using a full surge policy. And the dedication uh, of our new leadership team in the ED with our new nursing director, Darlene Vaughn, and Carl Ramsey as the system director, and Peter Shearer as the new uh, operational director. We see uh, a new dedication to flow and throughput, and I, I also shouldn't leave out our new chief medical officer, Vicki Lopachin. Uh, I believe that you will see uh, improvements related to better utilization of uh, flow and throughput within Mount Sinai itself as we move patients uh, up to floors in advance of discharges and frankly also uh, do some improvements in our discharge processes on the inpatient units. So it's a long-winded answer, but the, it's, uh, it takes many moving pieces to improve that problem and all of us are focused on that problem and we share your concern. But, you know, you also raise another important point and that is uh, we're now one health sy healthcare system and uh, we are currently developing a strategic plan for all of the hospitals in our system. It's, it's not a hub and spoke model. It, we're gonna have centers of excellence throughout the system at all our hospitals. It means that there's gonna be collaboration among all the hospitals. Uh, the school over the, uh, since October has brought on 700 additional faculty uh, from Beth Israel, from St. Luke's, from uh, Roosevelt, and the New York Pioneer Infirmary. So we're now a much larger team. Uh, we have to think locally in terms of how we can do better at Mount Sinai, but also to think more globally on how we're gonna interact, share patients, share expertise, um, and work together as one of the largest healthcare systems in the United States. Do you have a question? Please raise your hand. Dan Hughes, Employee Assistance. This is for the Dean. Could you comment on the impact of the merger on the graduate med medical education programs? We're uh, now one graduate medical education program as well. And so all of the training programs at the hospitals that I just mentioned are now part of the Icon School of Medicine. We're now responsible for 2,000 uh, residents, which makes us maybe the largest training program in the United States. Uh, that gives us lots of opportunities to look at each of the programs, to share the expertise, the mentorship throughout the system. So I think that uh, all of our training programs are going to benefit, uh, where uh, we have leadership now in graduate med medical education at each of the hospitals that are working uh, together. Uh, so I'll be making some announcements over the next week or so about the, how the leadership will come together, but it's a real opportunity for all of our house staff and our mentors uh, to even do better than we have in training the next generation of leaders. What's the plan for Sinai to position itself within the Manhattan market, and where do you find the unique institutional brand of the health system in the short and long term? So right now we're 40% of the discharges in Manhattan. So we're the largest provider of care in Manhattan. So I don't worry about how we fit. Um, but, uh, but, but as we think long term, um, we are thinking about a branding strategy. Um, and part of that branding strategy has to be with the comprehensiveness and the excellence of what we do, which is to say that we can take care of any problem for any age for any patient. Um, and we can do it in a way that few other places in the country can. What I would add is, uh, you know, we're competitive people. And um, 
<laughs> there are several differences as we put our healthcare system uh, together between, say, North Shore and uh, New York Presbyterian. And, and that is, as I kind of mentioned before, we're going to be a truly integrated system. One system working together, building on each other's expertise. One medical school for all of these hospitals. New York Presbyterian is two hospitals, two medical schools, three separate board of trustees. It's not going to be, it's not integrated the way we're going to be. And North Shore is Hofstra Medical School. It's not Mount Sinai. So we can be the best. Yeah, and, and, and other things to think about. Um, we will have an insurance product. I mean, we are thinking um, all the time, virtually half the meetings I have in any day, and the previous one I just had, is all about how we prepare ourselves for population management and taking risk. The impetus for this merger was so that we could take risks, that we would have a system that was large enough, that we have 7,000 doctors in our network, um, and uh, it's not going to be a narrow network. Some of our competitors, especially outside New York, uh, have expanded into other markets like Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, uh, the Sun Belt area especially. Yeah. Do we have any expectations in well, the future in that direction? Well, let's, let's remember something. If you're in Cleveland or if you're in Rochester, Minnesota, the market isn't that big. Um, in New York, within 50 miles of New York are some 50 million people. So if we just did this market really well, we could still do very well. That's not to say that we aren't thinking more globally. We have added to our international marketing, um, and we have a number of initiatives all over the world including the Middle East, Russia, and China. Um, we have opportunities that we're pursuing in Florida. We know that the New York Iron Ear Infirmary and Mount Sinai have a national brand, and we can use that brand in smart ways all over the country. Um, but uh, our focus has not been as national as has Cleveland Clinic and Mayo, because they have to be. Um, but, you know, it, I would think over time that will slowly change too. Yeah, but we have to do that in a strategic way. You know, uh, some of uh, Mayo and Cleveland Clinic have done it, Hopkins has tried to do it, uh, Duke has got some initiatives. A lot of those initiatives fail, you know, because you're spreading yourself too thin. Um, Cleveland Clinic has had to cut about 6% of its work, of its budget. And some of that was taking some risk that didn't, you know, work out. So uh, it's all about strategic planning and, and, you know, picking the right places to expand our brand. Over here. Bianca Fleming. I just want to know in what way this merger is affecting nursing overall, especially in the light of trying to advance us towards a more, even more excellent practice overall. Let me address that for a moment. Uh, under the leadership of a superb nursing team, uh, we're on track for uh, what I hope will be just the uh, most amazing magnet experience when the magnet surveyors come here the first week in June. And uh, the nurses at Mount Sinai have prepared in a way that uh, just, uh, just impresses me to no end and also at Mount Sinai, Queens. And uh, yeah, Beth Israel has a nursing school. And it just got approval to become a four-year uh, school. Uh, the, the medical school is, going to, is go starting to interact with that nursing school. We're going to develop a strategic plan for the nursing school. There's going to be a recruitment of a new dean for that uh, nursing school. And nursing leadership here will be involved in that uh, process. And we expect that you know, if we do the right thing with the nursing school going forward, it will enhance the experience of nursing throughout the entire uh, health system. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Jeff Farber from Mount Sinai Care and Geriatrics. Uh, given the challenges that you've described this morning, is there a top behavior or uh, a specific action that everybody in the room can take and bring back to our teams that we can start doing, exhibiting and today yeah, that I would want, help us to That's, uh, that's a very, very critical question. I want to answer that. I'm going to give you a prolonged answer. Some people have heard me say this before, and I apologize, but for those who haven't, I think it's, it's useful. If you do a thought experiment and you start to count the hospitals going south from Mount Sinai, just on the east side, we have Mount Sinai, we have Lenox Hill, we have 
special surgery, we have MSK, we have New York Hospital, we have NYU. Got six hospitals within three miles of each other, just on the east side. Of those six hospitals, MSK is a major brand in oncology, HSS a major brand in orthopedics, Mount Sinai, NYU, and New York Presbyterian are all top 15 U.S. News and World Report hospitals. So you got five of those six hospitals are extraordinarily accomplished. And they're all within three miles of each other. So what does that mean? That means patients have choices. You can have great care in any number of places on the east side of Manhattan. That's just the east side of Manhattan. We got the whole west side, right? There are other boroughs around here. Yeah, you know, you know, there's, there's just a lot of extraordinary competition. Right? So what does that mean for what we have to do? What it means is we really must provide excellence every moment. What we heard from Mike Marin about the security guards has to be something that everybody does in every job they do, every day, every minute. It means that nurses look patients in the eye, sit at the bedside, ask them how they're doing with real caring and compassion. It means that doctors treat patients first and they don't think that they're more important and their schedule is more important than their patients. It means we really, really have to put patients first. When Dennis and I were doing psychotherapy back in eons ago, I know that what we taught a lot to both residents and to our patients was to remember that you can't always be perfect all the time. You can't be that hard on yourselves. You have to give yourself a little bit of leeway. What I'm telling you now as the CEO, no, that's not true. <laughs> what, what I'm telling you now is that every day has to be excellent. Every day. You can't come here and get a B. Because if you get a B, there will be 20 patients who will go somewhere else on the east side of New York. Susan Somerville, who's our new president at Beth Israel, Mount Sinai Beth Israel, said something really profound at her town hall meeting. What she said was, you know, in the 10 seconds before a patient is anesthetized and goes to sleep in the OR, they have a consciousness and attention that is so acute, they remember everything that happens for those 10 seconds. And all of you who've probably gone through some serious surgeries, or even less serious where you are anesthetized and worried, remember that experience. I certainly do. And what she said is, if a nurse or a doctor puts a hand on your arm and says, don't worry, you're in a great place, everything's gonna be fine. You'll remember that for the rest of your life. And that's the kind of compassion we have to show, and that's the kind of thought that goes out of our way to be special and to differentiate ourselves. So that's what we have to do, and that's what we have to remember every day. So if there are, uh, oh, sorry, we have another question? Yes, Just please. one more. Yeah. I'm yeah. working with a number of people here at the institution on efforts to improve our, our greening efforts or sustainability efforts. <coughs> Is there a thought or commitment to that that you can talk about that can that is supportive of that, or what is your thinking along those lines? We, we do very, very well here. People just don't realize how well they, that yeah. we're doing. Well, we actually do uh, many efforts. One of them is the greening of the OR campaign related to creating uh, different ways of handling waste disposal. And I think throughout the organization, there, there are many efforts. Uh, I seem to recall um, one of our former medical students with the last name Charney leading the, some of those efforts for the medical students a few years ago. And uh, all of those efforts have been very successful in isolation. And so I think what I would take away from what you said is that perhaps even through uh, some a publication like Inside Mount Sinai, we would highlight a lot of those programs so people can be more aware and areas that have not yet focused on greening of their particular areas can be inspired by those and to work in that direction as well. Hi, uh, my name is Francine Fakie. I'm one of the uh, surgical medical nursing directors. And just to uh, this point about my chart, personal experience, I took a very close relative to uh, the FBA last week to see a GI physician. And um, over the weekend, we actually accessed my chart 
and had an opportunity to uh, review the labs. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that um, our experience in the FPA, as Dr. Callahan knows, because I emailed him, was fantastic. Um, everybody from the receptionist onward was so warm and friendly and really just made us feel so good, um, including the physician who took care of us, spent a lot of time educating my family member, and you know, a lot of gratitude goes out to you for that. Um, and you know, just overall, since I have the mic, um, I just want to say that you know, Dr. Rich has been here for 30 years, and on Friday, I'll be here three years as a nursing director. And I am so proud to work at Mount Sinai Hospital. I work with such an outstanding group of nursing leaders and nurses, and I feel really privileged to work under the leadership of Carol Porter. And um, I do appreciate all the support that Dr. Rich gives us, but really it's just an incredible place to work, and I have so much pride in what I do every day. So thank you. Thank you. No, actually, I just wanted to also comment that we've also recently, for patients who are discharged from our emergency department, as well as patients that are discharged from the inpatient, when they get their discharge instructions, they will now be receiving within their discharge instructions notification of pending laboratory results mm -hmm. um, and information about who to contact with, uh, with regard to questions. And these are things that will be reviewed with the, um, with the patients, you know, of course, prior to their discharge, either from the inpatient unit or from the emergency department. Epic, Epic has been updated to include that information. The physicians can choose, um, the, you know, based on their judgment, what is important for the patient to follow up. Okay, well, if I could sum up and say that uh, I think that a town hall is a wonderful forum. It's a great chance for people to uh, interact with us. And don't think that the uh, one or 1.05 hours per year that a formal town hall occurs is the only time to interact. Uh, we are a very transparent and, uh, uh, frankly, uh, a very open uh, leadership structure at Mount Sinai, and whether the information comes by direct email or, or information that filters up through supervisors and directors, we want to hear from people at, in this institution. We want to hear about the chances to improve the place. Uh, I prefer not always to think of it just as problems, but as ways that we can make the place better. And I would uh, also encourage everyone, again, to leave here remembering all of those important words you heard from Dr. Davis about the dedication and the compassion, but also remember that we have to be advocates for what's right for healthcare in this, in this very challenging time. And we also have to think about ways that we can be the most efficient in addition to being the most compassionate because we're, we're challenged. All of healthcare is challenged. It just look around us at healthcare systems throughout the nation, even at the hospitals that are in a crisis in the outer boroughs and in Manhattan itself, and we know that we have to work even harder to succeed in the healthcare environment of the future. But I have tremendous uh, love and respect for this institution and for the people who work here, and I know that we will get through those more difficult times because of that dedication and because we'll be able to compete due to our intellect and our compassion and everything that we do for quality at Mount Sinai. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this town hall. <laughs>